Howdy, y'all. Hi, guys. It's Ryan. And Angela. <laughs> From RA Music, your favorite mom and pop guitar shop music lesson studio deep in Hard Texas, which is where we're at right now. That's right. Small town East Texas. And it's time for another episode of yeah. Ask RA, where Angela and I. Answer your question. Mostly the I. <clears throat> Mostly I. The eyes have it answering your burning, burning mm -hmm. guitar questions. And things. And things. And stuff. Yeah. Alright, let's answer some questions. Yeah! Ow! <laughs> Alright. Welcome back uh, to another episode of Ask Carnegie. I think this is, what are we? Two, is this 280? Mm -hmm. This episode is 280. 280. Good lord, that's a buttload of episodes. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. <clears throat> oh yeah. Let's if you're this. new here, mm -hmm. uh, go ahead and subscribe. Just before you even watch the thing, just subscribe because you'll like it. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, all you old timers, mm -hmm. thumbs up, hit the bell, all that stuff. All Whatever. The, all the all YouTube the crap that yeah. you, you know, helps small channels grow. Great. You've heard it all. If you watch YouTube at all, you know, click the bell, hit subscribe, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. uh, link to our Teespring store down below. Go buy some stuff. Some stuffity stuff. Stuff and things. Get you a t-shirt. Yes. Anyways, all that good stuff. Angela, my beautiful wife, and I are going to answer questions mm -hmm. right now. First question, RDT275, hashtag Houston BBQ. Hello from Corpus. Awesome. Oh, yeah. So you could go get you some barbecue, RDT275. Mm -hmm. uh, hey, Ryan, as I've started to play praise and worship music, do you have any tips on getting those types of guitar tones and what are essential pedals in that style? Can you maybe show and explain your pedal board? Thanks for your show. Mm -hmm. I never miss it. God bless y'all. Oh, thank you, man. Awesome. Uh, well, I don't really have time to break down my pedal board right now, but maybe <laughs> in a separate video that would be a good thing for me to do. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. not it's not super complex, but no. uh, yeah. Um, yeah, it's it kind of depends on the particular flavor of phrase and worship you're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, the essentials are definitely you need a delay mm -hmm. and a reverb that is very heavy in that style mm -hmm. of music. If you're coming from the Hillsong kind of background or yeah. the um, what's the, what's the people up in Reading? Bethel. Bethel, which is Jesus. <clears throat> Jesus movement? Jesus culture? No. No, that's, that's IHOP, the people out of um, Tennessee or Kentucky. Okay. What am I thinking of Bethel? It's Bethel. Bethel is by itself. It's Bethel. All right. Anyways. <laughs> yeah. Most of that stuff, very much reverb, mm -hmm. delay. You're thinking Jesus culture. Jesus culture. I guess what yeah. I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm thinking. You know, ambient style, that's the super big thing with mm -hmm. that style of music. My friend is Steven, a good friend of mine. Mm -hmm. uh, he plays in the church and he's got the Strymons, you know, the big sky and the, um, mm -hmm. what, you, what you call it? All those stuff. Yeah, the Strymon stuff. That's like, you know, Strymon's putting their kids through college thanks to praise and worship musicians, right? <laughs> uh, so he's got, you know, the reverb the, and... I was supposed to say the flashback. That's TC Electronic. No, it's got the swanky strum and stuff. Right, right. Um, you know, and it's that real delay heavy ambient wash of sound kind of thing. So you right. definitely want to have that. I don't necessarily do all that in the particular band that I play in. Mm -hmm. Doesn't really call for that um, with the orchestration that we have. For the most part, I'm playing fairly basic parts. You know, because right. I am the only guitar player. Mm -hmm. We don't have two or three acoustics and multiple electrics to cover all these parts. So I have to kind of cover the guitar spectrum. Mm -hmm. And most of the time I'm just playing big open chords. I do use delay and reverb, a touch of that in, in when I'm playing. But not the whole crazy spectrum of stuff that you, you will see in that. And, and personally, I don't super love that. Right. Myself. I'm a little old school. Like, I was playing stuff before that became the, the thing. thing. You know, back in the 90s. Mm -hmm. You know, I was playing in worship bands and, like, yep. you know, I just needed a clean, a good clean, a good overdrive, a touch of delay and reverb, and that worked for me. And that's all I needed. But, you know, you can go just deep dive on YouTube and find a no, plethora of, of that stuff. But to me, it's, it's, it gets, it, sometimes the gear gets in the way, right? Mm -hmm. Especially, some people get consumed with 
I got the guitar and the pedal and the amp and look at the sound yeah. I have crafted and they get wrapped up in that. Look, have, have to have the look more than they yeah. have to have the quality. Yeah, and then like, wh where, where is your heart really at? Right. In that, so, but whatever, that's fine. If that's what you want to do and you create a sound thing. to make the, to play that specific song. Yeah. I say go for it because, you know, it's just like a vocalist training to do a run or or whatever just because they want to hit that note or mm -hmm. um, do that style of that per specific person because they just love the way that sounds and it gives it more emphasis or whatever emphasis so, so yeah on the right syllable cool. <laughs> um, a good drive not heavy distortion although I use that sometimes mm -hmm. a, a good drive <clears throat> delay reverb maybe a compressor and an EQ and all that sort of stuff but mm -hmm. the essentials is Reverb delay and a, a nice overdrive pedal. That's what I think. Uh, I'll try to come back around with my pedal board in a separate video. You can guys check that out. Thank you, man. Next question. Right. Great question. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Jeffrey Egan with the next question. Hashtag Houston barbecue. Thanks for answering my question. Uh, oh, where's yeah. the question? How bad habits? Oh, okay. We're, oh, yeah, we're talking about music theory and stuff. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. He's talking about learning bad habits, being self-taught. He says, uh, uh, try to rectify that now. I'm getting lessons from a local musician. It's tough trying to learn theory and stuff this late in the game. My brain starts chasing butterflies when people start talking about it. Mm -hmm. So do you often have students that started learning on their own and have developed bad habits? Question mark. How do you deal with that? Mm -hmm. Uh... Yes, actually. I mean, we have a fair amount. I would say the majority of our students usually mm -hmm. are people who come in who've. I got a boo boo. I got a boo boo on my. I got a boo boo on my hand. Right there. I see it. It's like a splinter. Five minutes later. Hmm. I got a. I got a. I got a, splinter, <coughs> I got a splinter in my hand. I think he's messing with it. From I'm shredding playing. the drums and. Guitars, I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, I was saying the, a fair amount of our students are complete beginners, absolute beginners. Never right. held a pair of sticks, never played a piano, never held a ukulele, never played guitar at all. Mm -hmm. So, but I, I, we do have students who've come in. You've had vocal students come in, like I sing in the choir. Mm -hmm. I've been singing since I was five. Yeah, I need some help, you know. Mm -hmm. And I do have some guitar students come in with some bad habits. Uh, what I usually do is just inform them, I'm like, hey. All right, man. You've got some. You've got some bad habits, mm -hmm. right? And they're not shocked by it. That's usually they've, right. they're coming to lessons because they know they have bad habits, mm -hmm. or they know they need help, or they hit a brick wall. And I'll just sort of gently inform them, "Hey, yeah, this thing you're doing with your hand, uh, yeah, it's going to impede your 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 progress for sure." Right. Uh, at, I'm going to harp on it a little bit, but gently. I'm like, "Oh, drop your wrist. Mm -hmm. Drop your wrist. Hold your pick. Oh, you're holding your pick. Weird. You know." Mm -hmm. I'll, you know, and just kind of tell them, okay, like, hey, it's going to take some time to break these habits, but you can do it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we're going to slowly try to start breaking some of those habits and maybe just one at a time. Like you can't come in and change. Somebody's doing five things wrong. Right. They can't fix five things at once. Usually it's like, hey, let's focus on this one thing. So right. Let's, let's, right. let's focus on your, your, your pick grip. Like I get people holding them like all oh, weird, you know, I'm mm -hmm. like, let's, just hold it between your thumb and your first finger. Let's do that because you're going to need these bad boys later on to either mute the other strings or do some hybrid picking. And if they're holding the pick, we can't do that. And, you know, mm -hmm. it's going to impede some of your playing. Yeah. I'm like, let's just, let's fix that. And right. let's play some other stuff. So, you know, I just, and I just let them know, hey, it's going to be a journey. Mm -hmm. You know, For sure. you can totally do it. <laughs> let's, you let's can pick, do it. Let's pick one bad habit. And, you know, people change habits all the time. doesn't matter how they are. Mm-hmm. People, people change all the time. Mm -hmm. In their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. What you got there? A white chocolate peppermint. White just kiss. White chocolate. See, I've been changing my dietary habits <laughs> this year. Mm -hmm. It can be done. And my exercise habits. Mm -hmm. People change their exercise and diet routines all the time. So it can be done. But yes, definitely has happened. Same stick drummers, I get holding sticks like you are holding your sticks all messed up. Right. Because we're going to change that because it's going to keep you from being able to do what you want to do. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why people study technique. It's not to 
be a stick in the mud or something. Mm -hmm. It's like, hey, with proper technique, you're going to be able to play things that are harder <coughs> with, you know, more control. You have more speed, more power, everything you want to do. Proper technique allows you to do that. It's not just rules for the sake of rules. Right, right. It's like if any of you ever played sports, there's a certain way you hold the baseball bat. There's a certain stance that you, I, I do this with the kiddos. Certain grip, certain stance. Like your coach tell you how to, yes, stay like this. Yeah, because yeah, if you just swing wildly at the ball, you're probably not going to hit it. Well, this just feels <laughs> natural to me, so I'm going to swing like that. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. You will never get a home run that way. <laughs> More good to play. Yeah. Yeah. You, you do the proper technique. Mm -hmm. And as many times as it takes until that becomes natural for you. Well, for the most part in baseball, especially, it's because it prevents injury. Well, same thing with guitar. If you yes. have proper technique, more than likely you can diminish or even cancel out a, a wrist injury or a carpal stress. tunnel or yeah. stress on your hands and joints. So Drums is a big thing on that for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. People using the wrong grip. Stick motion, all that kind of stuff. You're like, man, Same why are my like, hands hurting? I'm like, because you're... Especially with vocals. Yeah, absolutely. In bad technique, you can just damage shred everything. Shred your voice. And then shred it up. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, we just address it. How we deal with it, we address it. And we gently remind them as we address just it. Head we on. show the things that need to be worked on. And then some things might have to be um, focused on longer than others. And then we continually remind them as they're playing... Sometimes with me, I write it on their lesson at the top of the page. Remember to keep your thumb low. Remember to relax your wrist. Remember to... Fingers. Fingers. Um, <laughs> open your mouth wider. Remember to support your breath. Remember to keep your eyes open. <laughs> Little things that... Different things that they do. Keep your chin up for vocals, you know. Depending on the student and their yes. issues. Um, I'll write on like piano players notebooks, you know, watch your wrist, you know, stuff like that, that um, we go over it, but it won't be in their book or on their paper. So we usually write down reminders. So when they see that lesson that they're doing, especially one that will give them a little bit more issues than others because the technique changed and became more difficult, um, that they can remind themselves the reason why maybe they're probably not moving forward as fast as they'd like to is because they went back to an old habit or they created a habit that was incorrect and now it's keeping them from moving forward at a pace that will feel good, you know, and feel like they're accomplishing something. So that's what I usually do. Mm -hmm. I try to be very encouraging and just it's say, hey, super encouraging. this is a journey. You may not fix Unless it. Unless they get sassy. We may not fix it <clears throat> this week, but we'll eventually we'll fix this. Right. With enough discipline true, true. and focus, right? There you go, Jeffrey. Thank you so much. Great question. Next question. Mm -hmm. Multi-Sooner One. What did you buy Angela in return? Mm -hmm. mm. We are talking about uh, last week we talked about, or I guess it was last week, we talked about my new Schecter, mm -hmm. my new used Schecter that I got. <clears throat> what did I buy Angela in return? Bought her a bicycle today. Yes. It's not really, it doesn't really cover it. No. It doesn't really cover the... So, you know, other right. stuff that she wants. Uh-huh. Are soon to come. Are soon hopefully. to come. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I, <laughs> I drug out. We had a bike in the garage that was Nicholas's that he got like 10 years ago. Something like it's that. It's never yeah. been ridden. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, a little rusty in some places. And flat Neither tires. one of the boys were into bikes, like, mm -hmm. at all. They were just like, why, if you can fall and hurt yourself? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they were just like, can I just walk? nah. And both of them were so big that it felt uncomfortable, honestly, for them and their legs and their... And we never lived anywhere where they could really ride. Right. We, we... lived in apartment complexes most of their childhood. Mm -hmm. And then we lived in a right next to a highway. And so it was never really feasible for them to actually get out and ride bikes mm -hmm. without being really close to cars. So... Um, but yeah, so you... I, 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 I drug that one out today because we've been walking <laughs> like maniacs, like... Thousands and thousands of steps. I was like, yeah, it'd be kind of fun to maybe ride a bike again. Mm -hmm. So I dug it out and inflated the tires and checked some stuff and <laughs> rode it around. And like, of course, Angela's been asking for a bicycle for like forever. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, well, time to go get you back. So I got the old rusty, busty one. Mm -hmm. and Angela's got the fresh. It's right over there, actually. It won't last long. Yeah. No, it'll be fine. No, I mean, that and mine will last fine. You riding the rusty bike won't last long. Oh, okay. Yeah, probably not. 
because the seat's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. I can just replace the seat though. Anyways, <laughs> uh, so today she got a bicycle mm -hmm. and uh, whatever else she wants in the near future. Anything I want. Anything you want. I don't even know what number we're up to right now. Um, what of things I owe you? Yeah. I don't need Per guitar. Per guitar. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Let's not talk Three. about that. Uh, thousand dollars. <laughs> Three. It's 30, closer to ten. Thousand it's dollars. literally like closer to ten or twelve thousand dollars. I owe Angela twelve thousand dollars at this point in the game. Yeah. I was about to say something about somebody I know <laughs> who sold something of their wives and used some of their money to buy a guitar. But I'm not gonna name any names, but uh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sweet guitar though. Um, oh my god. <laughs> thanks, multi sooner. Next question, Sean Adams, hashtag Houston barbecue. Any thoughts on the Baza Waza Air Boss? Did I say Baza? Yeah, you did. I was like what? Baza Waza <laughs> wasn't very Faza Waza. No. <laughs> boss it The Boss Waza Air headphones. Okay. I'm gonna explain this to you real quick. Because you've yeah. probably never seen these. No. So they're headphones. Mm-hmm that you plug into your guitar. It's like an amp. It's like a headphone amp. But what happens is like when you turn your head a certain way, mm -hmm. it's it responds just like if you're in a room with an amp, you know, and you turn this way, well you hear it from this ear, but you don't hear it from this ear. Okay. So it replicates that sound of being in a real room. Okay. But with headphones on. Okay. It's a thing People came out, it got, when it was first released, you know, everybody's making YouTube videos about it. Like, wow, this is crazy. Oh yeah. And uh yeah. I've never tried them, but that's the gist. They, it sounds like you're in a room with an amp, but it's in your headphones. So it replicates that movement type thing. Uh, I've never tried them. I can't see myself using them very much because I just don't, I don't like to wear headphones for a real long period of time. I like, I don't like earbuds. If I'm listening to music or I'm, you know, working out or whatever, I like to use isolation headphones, but after a while they start to hurt my ears. Yeah. I'm like, I gotta take these off. Yeah, Cause I, I got like a, I got a huge my, noggin. I don't like that squeezing on my yes. timbers. Uh, but I don't like things shoved in my ears either. So like yeah, in, ear, girl, in ear like things it. I don't like hurts my ears. Yeah. And then eventually the headphones start to press on my giant cranium. Right. Cause my brain is so huge. It's raining in your cranium. It's, it's raining in my cranium. Um, it's, it's probably one of those things like, oh yeah, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. You know, it's probably pretty cool the first couple times you use it, but then it's like, are you really going to use it all the time? Mm -hmm. I could see myself being like, oh, this is pretty neat, and then not using it very much. I'm talking about myself. Now, some of you guys out there and girls probably have them, and like, this is the best thing ever. I love it. I'm like, awesome. But yeah. I don't think I would, I don't think. Not so much. Yeah. I think I'd be throwing money away if I, do, if I did that. Okay. Just me, personally. That's what I think. Thanks for the question, Sean. Next question, random hero with seven and eight string guitars becoming so common now, do your students come in wanting to learn songs played on seven or eight strings with the weird tunings that are used in so many bands now, or do you push them toward the six string stuff? All right, great question. Well, I have never yet in 10 years of being, uh, 10 years of teaching here, yeah. not counting the other places I taught before this, never had somebody come in with a seven or eight string. It's never yeah. happened. Mm -mm. So with your statement of them becoming so common now, they're not really. I mean, not in the I general, you know, if you think about all the people, maybe or in like, yeah, Go ahead. all the people who are like, I want to learn to play guitar. <clears throat> you know, I think an extremely small percentage of them are starting mm -hmm. on seven or eight string guitars. Yeah. Now, there as is. a person who likes a certain style of music, and like, like I love Jeff Lewis, mm -hmm. like, yes, a lot. Yeah. And Jeff is all about the sevens. I'm like, I need to get me a seven string so I can start learning some Jeff Lewis stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, that's okay. I still haven't done it. Ching, ching, <laughs> ching. Dang it. That we'll come to that. I'm just gonna go to Hawaii by <laughs> herself. That's what's gonna happen. You're, coming, you're gonna go to Africa. <laughs> <laughs> that's not. It has nothing to do with. That has nothing to do with this. That doesn't count. No. All unless, right. you, unless you plan on writing a check to the foundation for twelve thousand dollars, that'd be great. Only twelve? Okay. No, I need twenty. Oh. I thought you were about to ask twenty. Um you know, but it's not 
as like I, what I'm saying, as a fan of a certain style of music, or like you like animals as leaders, or you're into periphery, or any of these yeah, more I get one metal one because of that. If you're into this style of music, it may seem to you that mm -hmm. there are a lot of people who are into seven and eight, eight string guitars particularly, mm -hmm. particularly, mm -hmm. right? Because if that's the music you're into and the people you follow, that's what you see. But that's sort of your perspective. Mm -hmm. But in the whole spectrum of people who play guitar, it's actually, it's still not very many. That's mm -hmm. still a very small niche yeah. of the market, really. Yeah. Most kids, because we deal with mostly kids, we've mentioned that before, um, kids between the ages of 8 and 14, 15. Usually that's where mm -hmm. where they lie that are common that will always come through. We might get a little younger, we might get a few older, but for the chunk of our students, 90% of our students are right in there. And most of them are wanting to learn stuff either ranging from... Clint Black, George Strait, you know, uh, Miley Cyrus, um, uh, Nirvana, what is her name, Taylor, Taylor, Taylor Swift, Swift, to Nirvana, Led Zeppelin, Green Day, Metallica. Led Zeppelin, Met Metallica. So in their wheelhouse of understanding, Six Strings is all they know. And that's probably all they'll ever be exposed to, for the most part. Because their grandpa had a guitar, and now their dad has a guitar, or or brother had a guitar and he took lessons for a couple of days and now she's taking lessons and it's usually that's what it, literally for the last I don't know how many now thousand kids that we've had come through this this place um, that's about that's yeah. about it so we don't um, push anybody towards it um, that's just usually they come already with their own guitar so um, and Ryan always, now I don't necessarily bring up other artists because I don't, that's not my thing. I'm just there to literally teach them up to a certain point so when they get to Ryan they can have, they can really focus on what they want to play instead of the groundwork of it. The core foundation. Um, but uh, now Ryan might mention to some of the kids, well if you're interested in this, you might be interested in that. And if they happen to play a seven or eight string guitar, then... Yeah. I've shown some but, Jeff Lewis videos to some kids. Like, you gotta check this guy yes, out. Yes, but for the most part, the kids are not really into it. Because that's like old man rock. <laughs> Sorry. It is. It's just that older generation loves that sound. Just like we never, kids, whenever... Because if you're 27, you're an old man to a 12-year-old. You are. It's true. And if you're, if you're 44... 20, if you're 25, you're old man yeah. to a 12-year-old. Yeah. You're old. Like, you're not even in high school anymore. No. So, for the most part... Have same you seen like, a beard like this in high school? Yeah. <laughs> they won't allow it. <clears throat> Excuse me. For the most yeah. part, that's, you know, that's that's how, that's what we deal with. So, um, it'd be cool if, I mean, we ha literally if someone came never in... had a kid or student that was like, Hey, I want to learn this eight string guitar yeah. or learn the seven string. We've never had them ask. No. I mean, if someone came in with a 7 or 8, really like, that's fine. Suggested. Yeah, well, you know. Because learning 6 is hard enough. It can be a challenge. So learning 6, getting them there is hard enough, let alone saying, hey, how about try 7 or I'll 8? I'll tell you what. 5-string basses are way more common than 7 and 8-string guitars. Yeah. Amongst bass players. Like, having <coughs> more than your normal strings. <coughs> super, <coughs> super more common oh i think that popcorn kernel finally released dislodged <laughs> yes i've been sticking choking on that kernel for like two hours mm. <laughs> so i was saying before angela God. choked on a popcorn kernel mm -hmm. uh yeah i mean that's actually a lot more common amongst mm -hmm. bass players than seven and eights are amongst guitarist in general not that you won't have pockets like you could live in a place where like man everybody in my freaking town is playing seven strings which could completely be the case. But that's mm -hmm. just in your town or your city mm -hmm. or whatever. Probably not, though. Mm -hmm. Majority of people are That'd not. be like some Twin Peaks and type <laughs> town that's like, what's up Twin with this Peaks. place? <laughs> yeah. That's awesome, though. <clears throat> so there you go. Great question, man. It has never come up. I would never discourage 
necessarily yeah kid. never discourage them be like okay yeah. cool well first let's learn some basics yeah first let's learn how to tune your guitar you know, or let's <laughs> learn how to play one fret on a and, you know. and know what the names of the strings are in. yeah but that's not something beginners generally do you don't ever have a yeah. fresh beginner who's never touched guitar at all come in with a seven or eight that's not yeah. seven and eights are more like you've already been playing for a Unless while their grandpa on sixes. It to them or something. most that's how most people do it actually they start on six and at some point, they're like, hey, I like that music. I want to play that song by that guy. Oh, they use a seven. I want to be a seven. <coughs> That's typically how it goes. All right. Great question, Random Hero. Uh, I've been eyeballing a seven for myself. We've actually sold, in 10 years here, I've only sold two seven string guitars. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, no. Actually, I've sold some more than that. We sold, we had some Chapman sevens. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is right. I've sold four. Mm -hmm. Is that right? I don't know. Two Schecters, two Chapmans. <clears throat> I was going to say something. Never mind. What were you going to say? Nothing. Tell me. <laughs> I was like, those were the black years. I blotted it out. The dark, the dark times. <laughs> the dark ages. The dark times of... <clears throat> Before the dark times. Yes. Before the Empire. I, I, bl I blacked that out in my brain, so I would not I've know. sold four seven strings in ten years. <laughs> and har almost no one ever asks for them. Someone wants one, like, can you get one? Yep, I can order a check for you, what you want? Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't know, I don't really want one. Okay. I just want to play one. I want you to have it here. You just spend the money on it, so I can play it when you when I come in here. Yeah. And maybe scratch it a little bit. And go, so it, me. So it ended up being B-stock. So... That's what I really want. <laughs> <clears throat> you gonna get any sinister gates guitars? I'm like, you want no. to order one? No, no I, just, I, just I just want to play, play one. one. <laughs> well, no. Nobody's ever asked me to order a sinister gates one for them. They just want me to order one for the shop so they can come in and weedly weedly on it. Yes. And not buy it because they don't have any money. Um, great question. Thanks so much. Next question: Psycho G hashtag Houston Barbecue hashtag KTMA. If Sorry about that being a big word, but if you can ask Paul, BBM, BBM <laughs> bitter bass man, he if hates, he's seen he the new that. Spectre basses with their beautiful sandblasted bodies, and what are his thoughts on them? Hashtag Team Schechter. You should FaceTime him real quick and see if he'll... He's in New Orleans. So Paul's in New Orleans right now. See if you can FaceTime him. He's probably on a date with his girlfriend. <laughs> She's gonna see this and be like, I'm his girlfriend. <laughs> I know. He's my I was like, what did you do? He's like, what is happening? Here? Yes. What are you? <laughs> oh, are you are you out to eat? Okay, okay. Oh. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Hi. So we're on the video. Yeah. yeah. I told you he's out with his girlfriend. Hi. That's my favorite person in the world. There was a question for you. Turn it towards me. Oh. I'm trying to hug Hannah. Oh. There's a question that said, uh, if has Paul BBM seen the new Spectre bases with their beautiful sandblasted bodies and what is his thoughts on them? Yeah. Hashtag Team Schecter. Has Paul what? Seen Spectre bases with their sandblasted bodies. Do you know what? You ever played a Spectre base? You said Spectre base, right? Spectre, not Schecter. Sp I have not seen a Spectre base yet, no. Uh, since I've got addicted to the Schecter bases, oh. Hi, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm a Schecter fan. Before that, I was a Homer fan. So, uh, anything outside that I've tried, I've always gone back to Schecter. But I can check them out when I get back to Canton, though. When I get back to Texas, you know, the second favorite state. Ah! <laughs> it's in the top two. We win! Baby. Yeah. <laughs> we win! <laughs> All right. Well, they're they're quite swanky and Airtip fancy. Show. Look, she has an MTV oh, shirt on. Hey, hey, hey. Turn the camera around. Okay, there it is. Look. Can you see? Now turn it towards you guys. Oh. Oh my gosh, that is so cute. MTV. I love it. 
Nice. Oh, y'all are cute. That's totes adorbs. I love it. Yes. We're so cute. So cute. Super cat. I miss you too. Yes. We gotta get together. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. <laughs> That's it. You just had one. This one. Just one. One more. Just no. You. That was just it. That, that was, was it. it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Bye. Bye. Love you. <laughs> See, I told you that would be great. I told you he was on a date. <laughs> I was expecting it too. I was. I just knew that they were flying to New Orleans for business, yeah. work. <clears throat> yeah. But I guess they're probably out eating dinner. Yeah. If y'all know, Hannah is like my favorite person, and like, just like ever. I, just, I I really really like her. She's gorgeous and she's funny and she's talented and she's just so pretty and so sweet and so nice and so kind, and she's good for she's good. Okay. You don't have to leave any of them. Oh, I'm going to. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm going to. Okay. Yeah. Don't hurt yourself. I'm going to smack at it. All right. So, yeah, happy. no, he's he's never played a Spectre. I have a friend who had a Spectre, and he ended up, Stacy, who works for Kaiser Capos. He's That's one of right. the managers at Kaiser Capos. He's a mm -hmm. bass player. Super awesome guy. Mm -hmm. He has a Spectre. I actually worked on it here at the shop one time, restoring it for him. And mm -hmm. I think he ended up. I think he ended up selling it though, because he went back to. He's got a swanky, nice Fender bass that's like, you know what? It's not. It's actually not half as valuable or as nice as the Spectre, but he likes it better. And Paul has tried a bunch of different stuff, but he always comes back. He likes Schecters, mm -hmm. and he kind of likes Fender basses too. But yeah, but yeah. he's a Schecter guy. Spectres are like the PRS of basses. I mean, they're oh. swanky, swanky, swanky. Nice one, gotcha. yeah. but Paul is still on Team Schechter. There you go. And he has a girlfriend. Next question: Just fun guitar. Hashtag KTMA. Hashtag Houston BBQ. Great show, RNA. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chris. It's one of my favorite Englishmen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> New question: What is bigger, Siberia or Texas? Texas is easily bigger than Siberia. Yes. What is easily. This? Five and which has the larger animals? Okay. Well, Siberia on paper or on the screen, it says Siberia is 5 million square miles. Ooh, Lord have mercy. 5 million square miles of Siberians. That's a lot. <clears throat> That's a lot of Siberia. Mm -hmm. And Texas supposedly, according to the Alaskan map makers, has only got 268,000 square miles. Yeah, I'm, I'm Googling. Hold I'm on just a second. No, I'm Googling. So, on paper and on your screen, it would appear that Siberia is larger than Texas. I'm not convinced, though, because we all know that there's been some, some hoodoo voodoo with the mm -hmm. maps, and maps aren't accurate. You know, like that period of time where America was bigger than Africa because a bunch of white folks made the maps. You know, turns out Africa's bigger. What do you say? Who would have thought? Yeah. Right? But, uh, I don't know. I have to see it firsthand to really tell. <coughs> I'm not going to believe it until I see it. Interestingly, though, I did mm -hmm. Google this. Siberia's got 33 million people. Mm-hmm. Five million square miles, 33 million people. Right. Texas has 29 million people. Mm -hmm. So we're, uh, you know, a tenth. Wait, not even that much. You're smaller mm -hmm. than that. Mm -hmm. Way smaller. Yeah. Theoretically. On paper. Um, but we have almost the same amount of people in Texas as Siberia does. Mm -hmm. Even though that's five bajillion square miles. <clears throat> Question is, how many people in Siberia of those 33 million have guns? Mm -hmm. And yeah. how many in Texas have guns? It doesn't matter, it's not important. We, all, we lost all of ours in a boating accident. Everybody in Texas all went to the lake at the same weekend and lost all their guns. <laughs> the lake ate my guns. Apparently. So there you go, and what are the, which has the larger animals? 
That's a really good question. Probably Texas. <clears throat> yeah. Because we have elephants and hippo. You been to the zoo? Oh, <laughs> Lord Jesus. We got giraffes. We got elephants. We got <laughs> hippopotami. I think the native animals. I think we probably still, because our hogs get pretty big. Our wild hogs uh, have you seen sofas. Have you seen our cows? I, I looked at that I up. Forget about cows. I, tried to, I tried to Google it. It's like, what's the biggest animal in Siberia? And all that really came up was Siberian tiger, which is a freaking huge tiger. I mean, it's a large. Yeah. As far as tigers go, the Siberian tigers are pretty dang like big. Their heads are like pretty big. Mm -hmm. And then there's something like a, a moose or an elk. You know, mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, that's a pretty large animal. Cows are freaking. I bet you our cows are heavier than the tiger. So Texas way more doesn't have moose or bigger. We we have elk though. We no. don't. West Texas. Really? Big Bend. We got all kinds of stuff. Okay. We got alligators. I bet they don't. They, they might. They probably have alligators. I'm sure they do. I don't know, Chris. I don't know if Siberia has alligators. Isn't it too cold? Probably alligators. a little bit too cold. Yeah, there was. I didn't have time to Google in my entire life away to look at every animal that's in Siberia. Whatever. <laughs> but, you know. It's not a competition, Chris. But if it was, <laughs> Texas would win. <laughs> Thanks for the question, man. Appreciate it. Always enjoy the uh, the animal questions. Yeah, they're fun. Yeah, they are great. Yeah. Thank you, Chris. Truly appreciate them. Just fun guitar. Next question. Frankie Chan, who also has, he had a comment about he was envious of my Schechter collection. He'll be there one day. Yes, I would love to meet every single one of you guys. That would be so awesome. <laughs> Frankie says, hashtag Houston BBQ. Is there much left on your bucket list of guitars? And what does Angela get to balance out against your list? Interesting. I love all these Angela cheerleaders <laughs> out there. Team Angela. I'm getting a shirt that says that. Hashtag team. Team Angela's uh, gift list. <laughs> Ukes Ranch. Yep. Which I still have like three or four ukuleles that I want on my list. Um, Let's start with my question first. Of course. <laughs> How much is left on your bucket list of guitars? Well, all of them. Mm -hmm. All of the guitars are on my list. Yeah. You know, uh, so the the black Schecter that okay. we showed off last Name week. Name two. Okay. Because we don't have time to go through all of it. Well, I've already mentioned the 75 Les Paul Custom mm -hmm. many times. So that is sort of at the peak of the list. Okay. Uh, an Acacia Cronus has been on the list for a while. Mm -hmm. We've had several Acacia Cronus custom shop, you know, guitars. My boys at Acacia in California. Yeah. And every time one comes in, I'm like, <laughs> Those are freaking sweet. Mm -hmm. I need it. I need yes. it. Anyway, so an Acacia yes. Cronus, mm -hmm. uh, probably a Jeff Loomis seven string, because I'm, um, you know, every time I see one, I'm like Jeff. Mm -hmm. I mean, Jeff doesn't play Schecter anymore. He right. plays Jacksons. Miss Jackson. Miss Jackson, if you're nasty. Jackson. Jeff is apparently nasty now. Mm. But he, you know, he sort of arose to his the height of his fame playing Schecters. Mm -hmm. and was one of their top signature artists for a while. So, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. 75 Les Paul Custom. Acacia Cronus, Jeff Loomis, Seven String, Flying V of some kind, and and everything else. Mm -hmm. Okay. What does Angela get to balance out against my uh, wish list of guitars? A Trans Am. Mmm. Mm. That's what I want. Yeah. I think that would pretty much make us even, honestly, for the one I actually want. Yeah. Versus. Which is a oh. <laughs> all the Trans Ams. <laughs> Every Trans Am that ever existed, I want to own them all. Yes. What Trans Am do you want? The 1977. 77? 78. 78, 77. You don't even know which Trans Am you want. I See, want either I one of them. Guitars. Either one of them are fine. But what are the stipulations? Because I found you some Trans Ams that were not. Black hmm? with the gold Firebird. Black and gold. Uh -huh. Original paint. We can't buy a blue one and then paint it black and gold? No, because when it, if it starts to fleck, I don't want it to no, fleck. No, you strip it down and you prime it and then you Is paint Pete it. Is going to paint it for me? He could. We go to Regals and have them paint it. Mm -mm. 
I want somebody who Pete knows. could do it, but it'd be like five hundred thousand dollars for Pete to do it. We have a buddy, my friend Pete. Then works. I guess you're gonna give me that other one that's original then. So I'm um, gonna get you the one that's only seventy thousand dollars. Yes. Okay. She wants the smoking the bandit trans am in black and gold. Oh my gosh, that would be the best ever. The problem is you can't find those. And I can't drive a stick. And when you find them, they're like <laughs> Fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars. Like you can buy a crap, not a crappy. You can buy a seventy-seven, seventy-eight, like a blue one. For like, oh, I found one for four grand in Waco, Texas. Oh you can get a red one. You can get a gold one, gold or yellow. I don't want a gold Trans Am. You can find seventy-seven, seventy-eight Trans Ams for reasonable prices, mm -hmm. but not a black and gold one, like original black and gold. Mm -mm. I mean, you could find them. You can find them, sure. But they're seventy-five thousand dollars. <clears throat> That kind of eliminates the point of getting the older cars because, you know, you can buy like a nine to six Corvette for $7,000. <laughs> I'm like, I got a Corvette. I'm in the Corvette Club, 7K. I got a Smoking the Bandit Trans Am, $85,000 million. <laughs> but yeah, get me, I'm going to get Angela 78 uh, Trans Am Firebird. It will wipe the slate clean for all of my guitars that I presently have and probably all future guitars. Mm. 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 <laughs> That's 78 guitars, Angela. Mm -hmm. So we'll there you go. See. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Thanks for the question, Frankie. <laughs> Next question, Steven Sharp. Well, hello guys from Oregon. It's definitely a beautiful Ray of Schechter guitars. Ryan, right, my question, I'm thinking about buying a Tokai Les Paul. Standard version. I knew a guy who had a couple. I thought they were pretty awesome. Have you played them? Have you tried them? If so, what's your thoughts mm -hmm. on them? Would <clears throat> I would have to get it from Reverb. Angela, question for you. With the holidays coming, have Holiday you had a chance season. to check out Brian's Sensor's Christmas album? Mm -hmm. I have been enjoying the rockabilly twist on the Christmas songs. My wife likes to listen to Christmas songs early, and I get sucked into the Christmas vortex. Of course. Because Christmas songs are the best. Do you know who he's talking about? Yeah, Brian Sensor. Okay. He's a big band guy. Okay. I don't know that guy. Why do I not know him? Yeah, you do. I thought you did. I played a lot of big band music in college, and they since blocked it out of my memory. It was the dark times. I probably have heard him. It's Setzer. Oh, Brian Setzer. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, I know who Brian Setzer is. I didn't know who Brian Sensor. It's probably a voice recording. Probably. Christmas. Brian Setzer. Sorry, I'm just reading off the page. He has a Christmas tour. I thought there was maybe a Brian Sensor I hadn't heard of. <clears throat> I knew what he was talking about. I didn't know what he was talking about. I took him at face value. Sensor. Yes. Yes, I love it. It came up on, I had a, I had um, a Michael Buble Christmas on my Pandora and I was playing it and one of his songs came up on there and I was just like, I so enjoy his songs. I, I do like Brian so his, I so enjoy his, um, uh, his renditions of Christmas songs. They're just great. Brian Setzer Orchestra. Yes. Yeah. No, I like him. He's good. Yep. So, have you played the, what's your deals? To Kai Les Pauls. I have not mm. ever played one. Is it George? George to Kai. Mm -hmm. To K. To K. Sorry. To K Les Pauls. Mm -hmm. So those are Japanese guitars that they made in Japan mm -hmm. that are basically <laughs> carbon copies of Gibson Les Pauls. Mm -hmm. Gibson sued the crap out of them, and so you can't buy them in America. You can still make, they make them in Japan. It's like, they're making Les Pauls as good or better than Gibson was making mm -hmm. Les Pauls. Because, I mean, let's just... Be real, it's just wood and metal and paint. Yeah. Right? I mean, if you get the dimensions the same. If Gibson can make 10 million Les Pauls and them all be their Les Pauls, someone else can carbon copy it. Some of the most famous Les Pauls ever were not even Les Pauls. Slash. I remember that. Marie Slash. Tyler, we had an RNA about that. Yeah. Slash played a Les Paul <laughs> that wasn't Les Paul. Everybody made everybody want to buy Les Pauls. Mm -hmm. You. Made Gibson a buttload of money on a copy, mm -hmm. but fake. There you go. Anyways, I have not played them. I would love to play one. That would be cool. However, 
Oh, it's heavy. If you're looking for a great Les Paul alternative, <laughs> for me to have a thumbnail it's like for a this Diet Coke Les Paul. I get you a CMG Ashley guitar. Ashley, these are great too. Yeah, they I are. Like them. They're beautiful. They're beautifully made. Statesboro, Georgia, which is not in Japan, mm -mm. but it is in Georgia. I like the way it feels. Me too. Look at that amazing hand-carved leather strap. Meticulously hand-dyed and I'm carved. I'm very proud of that. I am very proud of that. I don't know. I'm proud of you too. I'm super proud of me. <laughs> yeah! I just did that so we could have a guitar in the thumbnail because awesome. if there's not a guitar in the thumbnail, I don't know if people will click on it or not. But mm -hmm. I have not played them, Steven. I would love to try one. I know Fluff mm -hmm. from Riffs Beards and Gear uh, has a Takai that he likes. I would love to try one. Thanks for the question, Steven. <clears throat> Brian Setzer Orchestra. Yes. That's great. Final question. Whoa. So excited. <gasps> yes. Question for next time. Whose <laughs> artist's signature gear have you been impressed with and whose gear did you say, what the? Mr. Wild's gear is disqualified as an answer. LOL. Hashtag Houston BBQ. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not allowed to discuss Zach Wild. I like. I don't know why that's a disqualifier. <laughs> like, I don't Who's see... artist's signature gear have you been impressed? Oh. And whose did you say, what the? I don't remember. Um, what did you say what the on? Well, Wild Audio. Mm. And so it's like, that's pretty much easily like, so I'm just, I don't care. I'm going to say Zach Wild, right? So the Wild Audio line of guitars, I'm like, what the? What are you doing, man? Mm -hmm. Like, I am not, I like Zach, obviously, which is why I said I can't use Zach as an answer. I just got an Epiphone Zach camo, which, you know, I've been hunting for forever. Mm -hmm. You know, since I first saw it, I was like, oh my gosh, right? Um, but like the wild audio stuff, I'm like, I don't, that's real. You're talking about seven or eight string guitars being a niche mm -hmm. market. Like that's super niche, man. There's only been one or two of those wild audio guitars. So I was like, that's kind of cool. Right. I'd like to play that. But I can't think of anybody else's that I was like, what the crap is that? Mm -hmm. Like, what are you doing with mm -hmm. that? Um, impressed with, that's hard to say, man, because there's like, we, guitars are guitars. Mm -hmm. It's just wood and paint and metal. Right. That's it. So the ones that have captured my attention though, which is kind of strange, if I've said this before, like I'm a mega James Hetfield fan. Right. Like, love James Hetfield. I would never guess. You never, yeah. Well, no! anyways. But I don't own any James Hetfield gear. I have I some know. picks. I have some James Hetfield picks. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, I'm, I'm kind of shocked that over these years I've never bought a Truckster or, you know, any of his signature ESP LTD stuff. Mm hmm That don't make a lot of sense, does it? Mm-mm. Hmm. Um, but I pretty much like all of James's signature stuff. I'm like, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. I should buy that. There's a boog on the wall. Bought her because it was moving. Is it moving? Uh, I can flip side music in Denver, Colorado. Home of Flipside Blues has got a James Hetfield guitar right now. Because he's a dealer for ESP LTD. Yeah. Um, let me go get one thing real quick. Ow! I got this PRS. Uh, Essie, it's mm -hmm. a Frederick Akison. Now, before I even started listening to Opeth, like I knew who they were, but I wasn't really into them. But I saw this guitar and I was like, that's cool. I like that. It's got mm -hmm. options you don't normally find in an Essie. It's got a thicker, fatter body <clears> than <throat> the SE or the PRS single cuts normally have. Mm -hmm. um, it's got a little bit more of a spoon cut, a little bit deeper cut on the single cut. Mm -hmm. And most importantly, it's got abalone birds on it. It doesn't photograph very well, though, because it's so dark. But this was a guitar that I bought that I'm like, I like that a lot. The spec of it. Mm -hmm. I didn't even really know much about Frederick or Opeth. I was just like, that's a cool guitar. Mm -hmm. He spec'd that out really well. So, I like that. So, yeah, the Frederick Akison PRS. Now, he's still with PRS. 
but they've discontinued the signature models. He just plays their really nice, expensive custom shop. PRS is him and Michael Acker, Ackerfelt, the guitarists and singers in Opeth. Mm -hmm. They're still PRS guys, but um, I always like the Tremonti PRS single cuts. Tremonti! Yes. I know somebody who just bought a Tremonti PRS. Mm -hmm. Good for him. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, but the one, uh, you know, it's kind of unfair because the only one I'm thinking of, like, what are you doing? Is actually Zach Watt. Mm -hmm. Even though I love Zach and, like, was a big, huge influence on me and all that sort of stuff. But as far as right. the what the heck is that? Mm -hmm. So I don't know if he wanted me to disqualify that because I am a giant Zach fan <laughs> or because he kind of figured, that's so easy. Yeah, that yeah, wild yeah, audio stuff looks one. like. Looks like something. There are a couple I liked. I'm not saying I would never get one, but of course not. Most of them are like most of them are like, I don't I'm not I'm not feeling that, Zach. Yeah. <laughs> so that's okay. Yeah. To each his own. Yeah. And with that, that is the final question for the evening. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate it. Out and gals. I got a splinter in my pack. You fart. <laughs> I need you to dig it out with a pocket knife. Okay. Cause I'm a man. I can handle it, man. Yeah, I see it. Ow. Right. Is it what it is? Yeah. I thought it was another ant bite. No, it looks like a splinter. Cause Texas okay. ants will eat your face Little off. Little bitty splinter. Giant Texas ant bite. It's a split. <laughs> uh, so thank you guys so much. If you have a question for next week, please leave it below in the comment section of this. If you have any commentary on any of these questions below, please leave that. Please respectfully. If you will, we that's generally most people are around these yes, parts. I hope so. For the most part, they are. Um, and if you watch this entire video, which is going to be like another hour video again, good lord. Uh, if you watch the whole thing, secret hashtag of the day, leave that with your question or comment or just by itself. Um, if you watch this entire video beginning to end, it can be in more than one sitting. You don't have to watch the whole thing in one sitting, but if you watch the entire video, let us know. We'd love to know that. And leave us a little comment with the hashtag. Secret hashtag of the day is hashtag Basawaza. Because <laughs> I can't talk when it gets real late at night. I don't talk <laughs> real good when I'm tired. Yes. And sore. <laughs> yes, yes. So hashtag Basawaza. And we'll know that you watched this whole video. Thank you guys so much. Uh, like, share, comment as much as you want, as long as it's nice stuff. Yes. Uh, you know, comments. Y'all are sweet. The algorithm, the algorithm, the more engagement a video gets, the more YouTube is like, hey, people they seem like to engage they with really this. Like Why don't us. we put this in front of some other folks who have similar interests? Maybe they'll engage with it, and then we'll sell them stuff through commercials, and YouTube will get all the money. <laughs> And and they'll we'll give us like five cents. They'll give us like a penny for every 10,000 views. Like, thanks, YouTube. <laughs> See, our plan to take over the world. <laughs> it's working. If you really want to support us, get you an Art of Music t-shirt. Down in the description, you can go to our Teespring store and get you a shirt or a cuppy cup or some leggings Which for your lady. See, yes, there. You, you can yeah. start with that. Mm -hmm. Get you some leggings. I will get you some leggings. You just wait. I will do that. Okay. <laughs> All right, and thank you guys so much. We'll see you in the next video. Until then, keep the music alive. Don't forget it. Music needs you. And you need the music. We need to keep it alive for the next generation. That's right. Of musicians who don't ever buy seven or eight string guitars. <laughs> <laughs> Usually. Usually. Oh, Sometimes. goodness. You're going to hurt random heroes. I don't want to hurt feelings. your feelings, random hero. Random hero, I was not attacking you. I was not. If and it sounded like I, I was... And uh, I'm sorry uh, if it four. seemed like I was attacking you, because I was that was not my intention yes. at all. <laughs> Sometimes I say things and I don't really realize how it affects other people and it hurts their feelings. Yes. But I call people one trick ponies or overrated. That was me. Oh yeah, that was you. <laughs> You're super mean compared to me. Yes, I am. Uh, I call people morons in last week. Yeah. You but only Does people... someone call you out on that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes. But I was like, all of the people who are morons are morons. People who are not morons are not morons. Right. See? It's, it's easy. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you in the next video. Bye. 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 Uh.
Be kind. Be sweet. Be kind.